Joining us right now is Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He's former FDA commissioner and a CNBC contributor. He also serves on the boards of both Pfizer and Illumina. And he's a new book that's out this month. It's called Uncontrolled Spread, Why COVID-19 Crushed Us and How We Can Defeat the Next Pandemic. And uh, Scott, I kid you not, in the last 20 minutes, I received an email invitation to a birthday party out in the Hamptons this weekend for someone I've never met with dancing from five to nine and all kinds of other things going on. I, I take it that's a bad idea. Yeah, well, look, I think we need to recognize that this delta wave that we're experiencing in the United States is really happening against the backdrop of relatively normal behavior. I think people are taking some precautions in their personal lives and scaling back a little bit. But by and large, things are open. People are going out. Um, the epidemic has clearly peaked in the South. It peaked weeks ago in the South. It's now very apparent in the data. All the case growth that we're seeing in states in the South, or most of it right now, is happening in the schools, unfortunately, among younger children, um, as the schools become sources of secondary spread. But cases in adults are declining. Even hospitalizations are declining in states like Florida. So it's, the situation's improving. I think that there's a perception that we're sort of through this Delta wave here in the Northeast, because we've seen Delta cases go up, and we've seen them come down in places like the New York metropolitan region. We're also seeing positivity come down. I don't think that that was the true Delta wave. I think that that was a Delta warning. I think our true Delta wave is going to start to build after Labor Day here in the Northeast and the northern part of the country. This is going to be a highly regionalized epidemic. And so I do think that Labor Day and the return to school are going to be incubators for spread that's going to lead to that Delta wave. Now, whether we see a wave of infection as dense and severe as the South, I don't think that's going to be the case because we have a lot more vaccination. We've had a lot of prior infection which we also know is protective. But we will probably see a build in cases here in the Northeast. I don't think that we're done with this. I hope we are. But I don't think that we can conclude that just because the cases are coming down from the mini surge that we saw over the summer. If it's tied to the schools, and obviously we're sending our kids back to schools, um, obviously nobody under age 12 can get vaccinated. What are we supposed to do about it? Just watch and wait? Look, I think that this is good. This is very uh, contagious in the school setting. We're seeing that now in the South. And we've seen situations where so schools became sources of community transmission. That's what happened in the springtime with 1351 in Michigan, when Michigan had a very dense epidemic and so did Massachusetts. It was because they put their kids back in school really for the first time right in the setting of that wave of uh, infection, that, 13, that, that um, B117, excuse me, infection, and the schools became a source of community transmission for that variant. The risk is the same thing happens with this Delta variant. So I think the schools need to go into the year with, um, with in mind that they have to implement mitigation that's going to hopefully control spread, masks, use of keeping kids in defined social pods, improve ventilation. I think schools should be making much more use of testing. We've seen a lot of studies right now that if you do routine testing in the schools, once a week and preferably twice a week, you're going to pick up uh, infection before it becomes dense epidemics in that school setting. So there's things the schools can be doing, but the schools are a risk factor for spread within the schools and also becoming sources of community transmission. You know, I haven't let my kids play sports until the spring. They didn't get to do anything this time last year, and I want to let them play sports again this year. Am I, am I wrong? No, look, my kids are back in extracurricular activities as well, playing sports. I think activities done outside are lower risk than activities done indoors. And I don't think we can keep our kids hermetically sealed for two years in a row. And so yeah. we're going to have to take more risk for the sake of allowing children to get back to some semblance of normalcy. But, you know, I think, again, you need to think of risk as something that's cumulative with, over the course of the day. It's not necessarily binary, even if risk may be binary in terms of when you come into contact with a virus and when you contract it, it's going to be in an isolated setting. But if you do certain things that you know are going to introduce a child to more potential risk, think of things maybe you can withdraw to lower the cumulative risk over the course of the day. So, you know, we're prioritizing, obviously, getting children back into school. That's number one keeping them safe in that setting, trying to reintroduce extracurricular activities that are important to them. But do you need to go to an indoor birthday party? Um, things like that, things that you are sort of um, discretionary but higher risk, those might be the things you want to think twice about if you know you're introducing a child into settings that are going to have some risk because it's very important to them, like sports, like school. Scott, we hear all of these breakthrough cases um, for people who are fully vaccinated. Um, Maybe they didn't take every precaution to mask up every time they were inside. But if you see these breakthrough cases and now we hear about this new variant, Mu variant, I mean, what does this mean for life going forward? Is there a point where we actually are going to be able to go back to normal or are these new variants going to pop up all the time and continue to, uh, to hinder things? 
I, I think we're going to go back to normal after this Delta wave. Hopefully, this is the last real wave of infection that we're going to experience. But it's going to be a new normal because this is going to become an endemic virus. It's going to circulate every year. It's probably going to be a winter pathogen, as coronaviruses are, after we get enough immunity in the population. And it's going to continue to drift. We'll need to reformulate our vaccines from time to time. People will need to get revaccinated. People who've been infected and are relying on the immunity from prior infection probably will need to get vaccinated at some point. They're not going to have lifelong immunity from a prior infection. So this is going to become like a second circulating flu. And the challenge is we already have a flu. And if you have this circulating alongside flu, I think the cumulative productivity impact to society, to businesses, is going to be too great for us to return to life as we knew it. We're going to have to implement more precautions in congregate settings. So that means trying to get people vaccinated at work. It means improving air filtration and handling in indoor settings. We've greened buildings. Now we're going to have to blue them because, you know, we sort of hermetically sealed buildings to make them more energy efficient. But that might have mitigated against the kinds of precautions we need to try to reduce uh, spread of a respiratory so pathogen. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.